What a beautiful way to begin worship, to be reminded of Jesus' love for us. And Todd, I don't know if you heard, but you had an amen by one of our little ones in the back. (laughs) Beautiful. Well, many of you know one of my favorite psalms is Psalm 100, because it tells us who we are, whose we are, and what we should be about. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the land. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness for all generations. This morning, it's our hope and prayer that as we worship, we would make a joyful noise to God. And it would be a noise that would encourage people to grow closer to God and to each other. That's why we believe we're here. And if we can help out in any way, please do let us know. We believe everyone needs a church home, an extended family, to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. So again, if we can help out in any way, please do let us know. We're part of a church that believes that God works through people. And part of our tradition is to nominate people to help serve as officers in the church, leaders in the church. And so we are in that process. And in the back, you'll see some boxes for nominations. If you would, please uh, nominate someone and place their name uh, in that uh, box. That would help us out. We are currently celebrating our 50th anniversary as a church. And uh, one way we've been doing it is by having uh, former pastors and staff and members who have become pastors to come and preach during this summer. And it's been really a joy uh, to welcome these people. And today we have Nancy Ross Zimmerman here. And it is so great, Nancy, that you're here. And her son, Rob, I guess known by most as Robbie, is back here. Rob, would you please stand and let's welcome and give a thank offering to God for (laughs) first time back in a few years. And so we're glad uh, that you're able to join us as well. And uh, um, you'll hear more about Nancy, but Nancy uh, has been making a joyful noise her whole life. Went to Westminster Choir College and... Uh, Her and her first husband, Jeff, served here as directors of music and um, uh, did a terrific job. And then uh, after his accidental death, uh, went back to the Ohio area and then uh, heard that little mysterious call and uh, then served a couple congregations uh, in the Midwest. And so uh, it's great that you continue to make a joyful noise, especially Uh, The power of music and ministry, I know, has been very important to you. Uh, Next week, we have uh, Reverend Rob Morrison, better known as Rev Rob. Uh, He is uh, excited to be coming back and preaching, and so we hope that you can uh, be here next week for that as well. We're gearing up for our fall sermon series on the social dilemma. I don't know if you had an opportunity to see that um, documentary about it, but we're going to look at what technology and relationships and how do we keep the, this balance, especially as we think about uh, technology that can help and it can also hurt. And so we are looking forward to that new sermon series coming up. And the last announcement is a deeply theological one, because I know a lot of prayers are said on Sunday morning uh, for a lot of golfers. And uh, we are looking forward to, forward to our golf tournament coming up Uh, Saturday, September 17th uh, at Glenlock Pines. It's going to be a great uh, time of fellowship, and we're going to goldenize it because it's our 50th anniversary. And if you play golf or would like to play golf, we'd love for you to participate. But if you want to come for the meal and support uh, the fundraiser for our youth, we would love for you to do that as well. So let us stand and let us make a joyful noise together as we sing Praise Ye the Lord.
God with the sound of the trumpet. Praise God with the lute and the harp. Praise God with timbrel and dancing. Praise God wherever you are. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody praise the Lord. One more time. Praise ye the Lord. Today's Bible lesson is about saying yes to God. When you think about saying yes to God, you may think about obedience to Him, and that's true. Obeying God's commandments is the number one way we can say yes to Him. And as we learned last week in Sunday school, God's commandments can be summed up in two rules. One, love God, and two, love others. So, when you choose to worship God and make Him important, you are saying yes to God. When you obey your parents and teachers, you are saying yes to God. When you are kind to others, like a brother or sister, your neighbor, friends, children at school, you are saying yes to God. But did you know there's another way we can say yes to God? King David did in Psalms chapter 8. Let's read that. It says, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels, and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. So we see that David said yes, yes to God in all that he is. David saw all around him how majestic and wonderful or awesome God is. From the creations he made in the heavens and on the earth, to the humans and animals he made. And to think that in all of his majesty, God made these things for us to enjoy and take care of. So just as David did, we too should say yes, yes, to all that God is and how wonderful his works are. So take some time. Notice God's creations around us, from the wonderful landscapes all over the earth, to the beautiful sunrises and sunsets, 
to the moon, stars, and sun, and how all of those things work for our benefit and good. And then you too should stop and say, yes, yes, God, you are an awesome God. Thanks for listening. I'll see you soon. Bye. Sunday school is starting. Children are invited to join their Sunday school teachers in the back for Children's Sunday School in Grace Place. See you soon. You're welcome to remain seated if you would like as we sing together, Be Thou My Vision. Hope Center Houston is an adult daycare center for the homeless in the 1960 area. They have expanded from a small strip center space on 1960 to a two-story facility on Peakwood near Houston Northwest Hospital. Back in 2016, volunteers and staff from St. Dunstan's Episcopal Church felt the call of the Holy Spirit to do something about some poor homeless men living near their facility instead of just letting the problem grow. They pulled together an incredible team of volunteers and took the leap to provide a small space for the homeless to get out of the heat in the daytime. It has grown tremendously through the support of many organizations, churches, and groups like Boy Scout troops and Girl Scout troops who have pulled together to do specific projects. Those original volunteers, along with many more, are faithfully dedicating their time to serve these homeless guests. Even during the pandemic, they did what they could safely. Now the center is open again from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. to allow the guests to come in from the heat. Services still include breakfast and lunch, showers, counseling social services, um, mail service, clothes closet, and clothes washing. Recently, they've added limited healthcare visits and they're getting set up for dental visits. Just think about it. It's hard to get a job and keep a job if you do not have a place to shower, 
you do not have clean clothes, and you might not even have a computer where you can complete the application for employment. Unfortunately, these guests are people who have found themselves in a situation that they need assistance. The Northwoods Mission Ministry Team donations help give these homeless sisters and brothers hope. I am remembering the scripture in Isaiah 58, 7 from Eugene Peterson's The Message. What I'm interested in seeing you do is sharing your food with the hungry, inviting the homeless poor into your homes, putting clothes on the shivering ill-clad, being available to your own families. This video, and thank you uh, also Melissa and Lisa Aids and so many church members that have for many years um, been volunteering at Hope Center, helping those who suffer uh, homelessness in our community. So thank you for your dedicated service. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Loving and glorious God, as we gather together, we ask you this morning that your presence can be real through our worship, wherever we might be right now, through our prayer, the music, through the reading and the proclamation of your word. We also come this morning with thankful heart, giving you thanks for this new day of life, for the gift of love, the gift of family, the gift of friends, which make our lives beautiful and feel blessed. But Lord, as much as we want to focus on all these beautiful blessings we have, many come today feeling overwhelmed, discouraged, and hopeless. That is why, Lord, as we worship you this morning, let us be reminded that our strength our ultimate peace and comfort, our salvation, come ultimately from you. Let us be reminded, Lord, of what you stated in your word. Blessed are those who trust in you. Those who place their hope in you shall never fear. And Lord, as we strive to be your disciples, beyond our frustrations, our disappointments, and sometimes anger, beyond even our political views, which keep dividing us more and more, let us always be reminded of the ultimate message that Jesus, our Lord, taught us. Love our enemies. To not repay evil with evil, but to overcome evil with love and forgiveness. And we know it is hard with our human strength to fulfill these commands. That is why we ask you this morning also for your grace and power to transform and change whatever needs to be changed within us, to be the instruments of reconciliation and peace this country needs. Grant us a willingness to speak out for the weak and vulnerable. We pray for all whose lives have been touched by tragedy, all those whose hearts today overflow with grief, unanswered questions, and such a sense of loss. And in the darker moments, may they reach out to hold your hand and feel your comforting presence. May they and may we feel the presence of Jesus Christ, our Lord, the one who said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life the one who also taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen? Amen. He was born to a poor family in Israel about 50 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Having no education or riches, Akiva became a shepherd, one of the many poor, uneducated shepherds who took care of the sheep of the wealthy landowners. And one day, while tending the sheep, Akiva saw drops of water falling on a huge stone. And he noticed that directly where the water was dropping, there was a deep hole in the stone. What has hollowed this stone, he wondered. Is it not a small drop of water falling on it day after day? And then Akiva boldly thought, suppose I began to study the Torah little by little, drop by drop, perhaps my heart, my mind, would be opened up. And this is how, over time, Akiva ben Joseph, the shepherd, was transformed into the one of the most influential and outstanding Jewish scholars of all time. He often told his pupils, it was a drop of water that changed my life. Dear Northwoods Church, when I think of all the ways my life was forever changed because of my 10 years here with you, the first of my many prayers of gratitude are for the small but steady drops of water that Stuart McCall shared with this congregation and for the ways he allowed, even encouraged, a culture of wonder and questioning. Bring your mind in with you when you come to worship. And yet he always affirmed the goodness of God and the never-ending love of Jesus Christ and that call on our hearts. His sermons often pushed my buttons, and surely I was not the only one who would leave this place with something to wrestle with or chew on throughout the week. He continually prodded me, and perhaps some of you as well, to think and then rethink our beliefs in and about God, and about how we are to live in God's world. Week after week after week, we were invited to worship God with our whole heart and mind and soul and strength, with our faith, our doubt, our questions. And so the first scripture I want to share this day is one we heard with the children's time. It's Psalm 8. I invite you to notice the great love reverence, the awe that the ancient psalmist had for God. But notice also that poetic wonderment and honest questioning. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You set your glory above the heavens out of the mouths of babes and infants you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are humans that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them. And yet you have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You've given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, 
also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Northwoods was, for me, a source of seemingly small but steady drops of water, reshaping my faith. And it's so good to be back, and I'm so honored to have been asked to preach. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Thank you to the choir. The next scripture passage may have never been read in August before, and it's found in Luke 19 and is rightfully assigned to Palm Sunday. But there's something in this little insignificant sort of scripture that speaks, I think, into the Northwood's 50th celebration of ministry. It prompts us, I think, to consider how we also say yes to God. Yes, to love God and to love others. Now the familiar passage sets the stage for Holy Week, and maybe because my mind already knows the rest of the story, uh, I've never really paid much attention to the unnamed owners of the yet-to-be-ridden colt until now. Before we hear the scripture, though, let's pray. I invite you to take in a nice deep breath. Spirit of the living and ever steadfast Christ, open our hearts and minds to your word to us this day. Amen, so be it. So let's listen together to Luke 19, 31 to 34. When he, Jesus, had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he told them. And as they were untying the colt, the owners said, asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord needs it. Join your hearts with mine in prayer. May the words of my mouth, the thoughts of all our hearts, be acceptable to you, O Lord. Give glory to your name and build us up to be more faithful followers. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. As the owners watch these strangers untie the colt and lead it away, they remain silent. Luke doesn't record any words spoken by the owners, no words of protest, no questions posed about the details of when will they get their colt back. Their silence reveals an unspoken yes to God. And 2,000 years later, we still remember them. Throughout our worshiping service, we are reminded of God's incredible yes to us. The waters of baptism teach us that God claims us as children of the promise of the covenant. And in our prayer of confession and the words of assurance, we hear that even though we have screwed up royally, God says, yes, yes, you are forgiven. And the sacrament of communion offers a tangible yes, a yes from God in the life and love and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And the songs in worship reinforce the good news, the incredible news that's found in the yes of Jesus. 
Yes, you are loved. Yes, you are created to love God and to love others. So God's yes reverberates through worship. But I wonder, what happens when we creatures say yes to God? In the Old Testament, we see what happens when ordinary people say yes to God through stories like the elderly couple Abram and Sarai, or the reluctant Moses, the young boy Samuel. And in his parables, Jesus paints vivid images of others who say yes to God, the grace-filled father of the prodigal son, the poor but determined woman who searches for a coin, and the shepherd who won't give up on searching for a lost sheep. In each of these stories, we see what could happen when we say yes to God. There's a chance for healing, a glimpse of a new life, and there's hope for yet unimagined possibilities. So as we celebrate 50 years of ministry here in this place, I want to say thank you. Thank you for all the ways I've experienced your yes to God. And to tell you how grateful I am for the particular ways you said yes 30 some years ago, this congregation made all the difference in the life of the Ross family. So as Stuart often began his sermons, three stories. First story, in 1983, my husband Jeff Ross completed his Master's of Music from the University of Maryland. Now, Jeff had been spiritually wounded in our first church position out of college, and he was more than hesitant about the thought of applying again to a church to serve. But in the spring of 83, he did just that. He applied first to a church in Texas, and received the standard form letter from the committee, but after hearing nothing for a, a while, he applied to another church in Tennessee. And they reached right out, and he had an interview there, and that was particularly promising, but it didn't pan out. And then, late in September, when he was getting a little anxious, a man named Mercer Rogers called he was a member of the search committee, called to invite Jeff to fly to Houston for an interview at Northwoods Presbyterian Church. Now, Jeff's dad, my father-in-law, insisted that I accompany Jeff to Houston. He had some crazy confidence in my own musical abilities and thought the church should consider us as a team. Well, Jeff couldn't convince the committee to foot two plane tickets, so my father-in-law paid for my ticket, and we arrived together in Houston for the interview. The interview, we learned that that committee had been looking for someone with fire in their belly. And they interviewed a lot of candidates who had a much longer career, a longer list of accomplishments, but that fire in the belly was an elusive thing, and they just couldn't spot it. So they, you, Northwoods, took a chance on a young guy right out of grad school with only four years of experience because he had fire in his belly. And the leadership here took a chance and said yes to this idea that both of us could serve on the staff. Jeff as the full-time minister of music, and me, my task was to build a graded choir ministry for children three years old through high school. And your yes created the space for what became a vibrant music ministry which I know continues to still bless this community. Second story. 
four years later, after you had loved Jeff Ross so well, so very well, our family was in a car accident, and this congregation continued saying yes to God's call to live and act out of love by responding to the needs of our Ross family. You walked the walk. You kept constant watch at Herman Hospital with Jeff while I was here at the local hospital. You picked up family from airports. You cared for our two young children who were then eight and two. And although they were adorable, they were known to be a handful. <laughs> and when Jeff died 19 days later, this congregation didn't shrink back. You continued living your yes to God, and you shared the painful path of grief with me and with my children. If there was a need, you filled it. You helped with housework. You provided food. You assisted me with the purchase of a new car. High school students spent Saturday nights at our lively home to help get the children dressed and ready so I could be here to direct the youth choirs at the early 8 a.m. service. You invited us for holiday meals. We cried together. We lunched together. We laughed together. We sang together in rehearsal and in worship every week. You were a living breathing model of what church was intended to be. A loving, caring, hope-filled community. And I and my children were forever changed for the better. We felt God's yes through you all. Third story. Northwoods has long been committed to being a church that makes a difference. And your yes to God did just that for our family. Robbie, now Rob, Robert, and Ashley grew up with a strong faith in a loving God. With the permission to ask questions, to doubt, to wrestle, and a deep love for the church. And that, my friends, is something I could not have imagined 33 years ago. Rob served for 10 years as an ordained pastor in the PCUSA church before returning to school and landing in a different career, one that allows him to be at home with his children in the evenings, on weekends, on holidays, Ashley graduated Westminster Choir College where her dad and I met and were married. She also met and married a classmate and has served churches as both the music director and the director of children and youth ever since. And although she was only eight years old when we left Northwoods and moved to Ohio, her experiences here continued to shape her understanding of church. So, when she brought her youth group from Ohio to Houston a few years ago for a mission trip, she wanted her kids to meet some of her Northwoods heroes, including Stuart. And those rambunctious Ross kids weren't the only Northwoods kids who grew up to be shaped by your yes to God. Nona, Mary Lynn, Jimmy Teal, Tucker, Holly, are just some of the youth from my time here who were ordained and served. But there are countless other Northwoods kids who continue to live out what they know is a call to love God and love people in the everyday, not just as ordained clergy. Your yes was tangible in the ways you walked difficult paths with other staff members, including Maddie, Miss Maddie, the beloved child care provider, falsely accused of child abuse. Your steadfast presence and your desire for justice 
was transformational for all of us. Your yes prompted this congregation to stand up for women who were seeking low-cost gynecological care through Planned Parenthood. And yes, I was here when the church was picketed. Your yes to strategically helping those in need in our neighborhood created NAM. We marked the fifth anniversary of NAM while we were here. Your yes to God allowed us to try new things like choir camp, high school choir tours, mission trips for all ages, interfaith hospitality, jail ministry, and so much more. Presbyterian minister Tony Sundermeyer wonders what happens when we say yes to God's yes? Grace happens. Blessings happen. Friendship happens. Ministry happens. Discipleship happens. Lives changed. And we see Christ. And I think God smiles. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you un untying the colt? And they said, the Lord needs it. And the owners of the colt were silent, but their unspoken yes to God allowed them to partner with God in the beginning of a week that changed history, that changed the world. And my friends, the world and the church have changed dramatically since our family moved from Houston in 1994. And the church faces big challenges as we strive to continue saying yes in this post-pandemic time. The work ahead won't be easy. But Christ continues to offer opportunities for each one of us to step up day after day after day, to speak up in big and in small ways, just as that steady drip of water transformed the shape of a rock, you can transform the lives of those around you through your steady, faithful presence as you share love and grace and hope in such trying times. So keep your eyes, your ears, your hearts open. Notice the one around you. Whether it's a server in a restaurant, the one who checks you out at the dry cleaners, child care worker, cashier at the grocery store. Notice those around you. Look for the one without a voice, the one in need the one who keeps getting pushed to the margins. And keep being the church, trusting that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. For all the ways Northwoods Presbyterian Church has said yes these past 50 years, I am eternally grateful. And my heart echoes the words of the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Philippians. I thank my God for every remembrance of you, always in every one of my prayers, for all of you, praying with joy for your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I'm confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what really matters so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. 
Amen. Let's pray. Lord, as we breathe in this space, remind us of your spirit, the breath of life that continues to breathe life into us as followers out in the world and as a community gathered in worship. Lord, for the ways you have blessed us, equipped us, comforted and carried us along, we give you thanks. And we pray that as we go from this place, we will go encouraged, hopeful, and always watching for the help that may be needed. We pray it in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand for our closing hymn, We Have Come So Far.
a beautiful composition. How lovely. Now, my friends, we go out now into the world, and we remember it's God's world. So how do we go? Go forth into God's world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good, and return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, and honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you. And you. And you. And you. And go with the blessing of God, Creator, Son, and Spirit. In the name of Christ, amen. amen.